In this video we are going to talk about one of the nicest model you can imagine within the organizational theory. It's going to be the Griner's model of organizational growth. And I can tell you from my personal experience uh, uh, working with various companies and businesses, this Griner's model is very close to reality and you can uh, sort of use this knowledge when you are uh, trying to grow with uh, either as an employee or as an entrepreneur. So let's see this model which is going to describe how our organization is growing. As you can see, the wall model can be nicely summarized in one simple graph. On our horizontal axis, we have simply time, age, or a phase within uh, which companies. As you can see, we are going to have one, two, three, four, five phases. So let me highlight it. So we have first phase, second phase, third, fourth, and fifth. Now, on the vertical axis, we have size of an organization, so how big this organization is. So, of course, in the very beginning, you are starting at an absolute zero. There is, the, there is no size of an organization and no time has passed. And then you start to grow and you are growing through the first phase. And now I will leave a blank space over here. Then you are growing through second phase, third phase, fourth and fifth phase. Now, why I have left the blank spaces over here is that Griner's model is describing uh, after each phase some crisis of uh, which, which is basically the end of one stage and beginning of another stage. So let's highlight these crises at the end of each stage. So here we have one and one more. So now when we have the drawing, let's talk about it. We will now talk through it, as you can see, you know, in sort of this direction. So we are describing what's going on within a given phase of this model. And then we are getting at the end of the phase to a crisis of something. Then we move to another part and we say how we have solved this crisis thanks to, to something of this uh, green color. And then again, we talk through the phase and we are getting to another crisis. And again, and again, and one more time. So let's get to the actual model. We are starting in the first phase. This is said to be a grow through creativity. Entrepreneurs are developing their skills, they are learning from the environment, and they are launching new products. Now, the idea is that we are growing thanks to the creativity of the entrepreneurs because they are the ones who brought something innovative and people maybe like it, they're buying it, and so thanks to that we can grow. Now, entrepreneurs are focused on getting the company off the ground and not on the effectiveness. And this is important point because there is a very big difference between entrepreneurship and management. Because when you look at this, uh, getting company off the ground, that is basically the entrepreneurship. This is the entrepreneurial part. But managing the company with the effectiveness or trying to increase the effectiveness, that is the management. So being a successful entrepreneur is not the same as being a successful manager. Now, investors realize this. They find founders that are not the right persons for management. They would like to hire new management instead of, of having these ent initial entrepreneurs as managers. So this is called the crisis of leadership when the entrepreneurs are losing the trust of the investors. So that is the crisis of leadership, which is at the end of the first stage. Luckily, we can solve it through the direction and that is the second phase. Here is hired new management that sets the direction. So this is quite common. You know, when there is some startup or, or beginning or, of organizational life cycle, the entrepreneurs quite often sort of go away from the managerial positions and, and professional managers are hired that set the direction. And what happens is that the formalization allows for better control and monitoring. Now, however, we are getting to the crisis of autonomy because the creative people become frustrated. You know, in the first phase, we, we were growing thanks to the creativity. And now these people who were pushing us forward in the first phase, they become really frustrated because there is a new management who is telling them, OK, we have to formalize ourselves and, and we have to be more professional. Well, so that is the crisis of autonomy. However, even this can be solved in the first phase, a uh, third phase, where we are growing through the delegation. 
Here becomes the decentralization and reward systems. We are moving to a productive or multi-divisional structure, which hopefully you are familiar with from our previous videos. So you simply decentralize and you give some, some at least some part of the responsibility and authority into these creative people who are at lower level within your organization. Now, managers start to feel that they lost the control. Think about it again. In the second phase, we were growing thanks to the management and thanks to the formalization, the direction. Now, we have decentralized ourselves. So, of course, the managers feel that they are losing the control over the company. And this is called a crisis of control. However, even this can be solved in the fourth phase, where we are going to go through coordination. Here we try to find a balance between the hierarchical levels so that both the creative people will be some sort of satisfied and they will not become frustrated and managers will feel that they have the control over the company. That is the balance that we try to find in a fourth phase. Now, number of rules is increasing, but it does not bring effectiveness. You can imagine that you really have to bring a lot of rules into the workplace so that uh, uh, this balance happens. And that's how we are getting to the bureaucracy. Well, this, this phase and this crisis is called a little bit weirdly the crisis of red tape, but basically it's talking about the bureaucracy so that our organization became overly bureaucratic. And that's of course not good, but luckily we can solve even this in the fifth phase where we are growing through collaboration. Here we should try to encourage some spontaneity, some social control, and we are moving to the organic structure. However, the model ends here and it's not really describing what's going to happen or what kind of crisis is going to come after the fifth stage. So that was the Griner's model of organizational growth.